This is Jeff Glass with Alpha Media Group, and I'm on today with Dragon, my friend out in Virginia. And he is the owner, founder of DNA Pro Clean and Restoration. We've been working with Dragon for a while. We've helped out with his website. We do SEO, social media management. And I like to take times on this channel to really get to know our clients, uh, hear their story. Uh, Dragon, thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it. Sure. And uh, I've been really intrigued by your story. You and I have had some really great talks. I always feel pumped after our talks. Like I just came out of a really great sermon because I love hearing what I call the American story. You have that American story where you've come here, uh, you've, you've had some success, but it's really not been all about you. It's been about blessing others, but I don't want to give it all away. I would love to hear just how you came into owning your business. Uh, feel free to start back as far as you'd like. Uh, we have about 25 minutes of time here, so you're up, but I wanted to hear a little bit more about you. Hello, oh, Jeff. Um, it's good to talk to you as always. Um, I mean, where to start, man? I, I came to this country in 2000. Um, I'm from Serbia, first of all, uh, ex-Yugoslavia. Most of the people know as Yugoslavia and Tito. Uh, not beautiful country, beautiful people, beautiful culture, hardworking people, unfortunately, economy. And um, it's not a country that you can really just try something and succeed. And it's really hard. And you work hard, but you're always in the one spot. So I was was kind of trying to find something to move up. And um, coming to America, it was 2006, um, as a lifeguard, believe it or not, over summertime, just to do lifeguarding in the swimming pool. I didn't know anything about America. I didn't know anything about, I mean, I didn't travel much. You know, my parents were right. like nice, hardworking people. And, you know, they tried the best, but we didn't really have a luxury life or anything like that. And we didn't travel much. So coming to America was a big deal, obviously. First of all, I couldn't speak any English. I didn't understand anything. Um, but, you know, I wanted to try and I wanted to um, see what, what, what's going on, right? So I come to America with a couple of friends um, working as a lifeguard. And, of course, I fall in love with this country right away. And uh, even, even as a lifeguard, making $50, $60 a day, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> you know, in Serbia... People still make two, three hundred dollars a month and work wow. every single day. And you know, coming to this country and making even fifty dollars a day, it was a big deal. Um, mm. From there, you know, it was just kind of work all the time. We would, we would work during the day at the swimming pool. Uh, then we would go at night working shoppers, targets, and uh, you know, sort the, the the clothes and, and put the food in the shelvings and, and things like that. And we would just work like crazy, two jobs every day over summer, uh, make some money, buy some clothes, you know, buy some kids mm -hmm. for a family back home and, um, and go back home four or five months later. And over the winter, we would just try to find some jobs over there. And, and um, over, over the winter, we would spend any money that we made here. So I figured out that's not going to really work out. I come here, work like crazy for five months, I go back home to spend money and over and over again. So I decided to stay. Um, obviously, beginning with $200 in the pocket, it's never easy. Uh, but thankfully, I had a lot of friends that helped me to find some jobs and uh, do, do some work on the sides. And um, that's a Freddie, uh, friend of mine. So... That was the, you know, as, as, as beginning can be hard, that was, that was the hard beginning. It was two, three jobs every day. And uh, somehow moving forward, two, three years later, I got in this industry. Um, I think there was a, just God himself leading me towards this because I didn't really know anything, what I'm going to do, what I want to do. Uh, I fall in love with a beautiful lady. I asked her to marry me and she said yes and I was working the club, uh, as a as a security guy and it was like you know if I'm gonna get married I can't be working at night to be in the club scene so right immediately I said this is it I'm gonna quit this job and the last night at that job I met the guy who was clubbing all the time he was there Wednesday Thursday Friday Wednesday Thursday Friday for two years I'm like dude what do you do? Like, how you have money to um, come here every every 
other night. So he's like, yeah, I have a small business and I'm like, I'm looking for a job. This is my last night here. He's like, here's my car. Won't you um, call me tomorrow? So he was doing carpet cleaning and water damage restoration. It was, you know, just him and his dad and they've been doing it for a while. So I started working with them and somehow we started doing it. He had to go back home and he left me with his dad and we were doing like a 50-50. I would do everything and he would give him his equipment and we would share 50-50, right? So a couple of months later, I'm like, you know, I'm doing everything. Why would I share 50% of revenue with somebody that I've been doing everything, finding the job? But so that's how I started doing the dry cleaning first. We started with the carpet. I traveled to California to meet with the people that um, were offering the dry cleaning compound products and stuff like that to learn about that business. And we start with that it was pretty much part-time job because I was full-time dad. My wife had to go back to work. Um, so I would do weekends and I would do nights, like restaurant carpet cleaning stuff and always bring some friends to help me out and things like that. And two, three years later, we start 2009. Uh, I would say that 2012, we start full-time and I start kind of building the business. Um, I kind of learned a little bit about advertising. I learned about, about sales, marketing, operation. And uh, I really thought this is the, this is the amazing business. Uh, it's not easy, but it, every, every house has the floors, carpet, styles, hardwood floors, you name it, upholstery, rugs. They need to be cleaned. And um, I just kind of start building the business from there. Very good couple questions on that. So your story, I had heard something, I'd heard this a couple of times. And sometimes when we hear statistics, it's like, well, is that true? Where do we go to reference it? But I'd heard the story a few times and I've seen evidence of it in my own life. I was born and raised here. I don't even know how many generations back, but I'm surrounded by a lot of people that are first generation here. They immigrated here and a lot of very successful people. And I found myself studying those people, not like I'm writing a paper on them for, for school, but really just intrigued in their story, not even just for my business, but just how did this happen? You know, I, I met a gentleman who owns a sushi restaurant and he came over as a dishwasher and, and now he sold, I think, his fourth restaurant. He's mid thirties. And so I asked this question, I want to ask you. So the statistic I heard is somebody who comes over from this country is twice as likely to build wealth, uh, twice as much wealth. Uh, as someone who is not born here, I, I wanted to get your answer on why do you think that is? Is there something that, it's okay to throw me under the bus, but people that look like me that are from here, I just want to speak real. Is there something that we're missing as a culture? Is there something we're not grabbing because people are coming over from other countries with a couple hundred dollars in their pocket, no real network, but they got something. In a couple words, what is that something? Or am I off here? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. First of all, I mean, I got to speak for myself. I was hungry, man. I was hungry for opportunity. Um, I worked hard all my life. I worked with my dad in the farm. I was helping him, like everybody, like summertime. Everybody's excited. Uh, no school, you know, summer break. Everybody goes to the pool, having fun. And I would go with my dad and my mom in the village helping my grandparents on the farm and that's i think the hardest job you can even imagine it just it just you know it's very physical hard labor job um for nothing it was just for food right so we can put the food on the table and i wasn't getting paid for doing that or or anything like that so when you i i'm never gonna forget a friend of mine who was in usa uh before i came here he was the year two years before me working as a lifeguard and I said, man, how is it in America? Like, like, how is it over there? How is the, the life over there? He's like, imagine this. You go to work at a swimming pool, just watching people. It's not a hard job. You know, just make sure nobody drowns, right? And you get paid for that day, and you go to the store, and you buy nice shoes. And we're like, wow, just one day working, you can afford to buy shoes for one day? I mean, that's, you know mindset over there it was just like you work hard and you're trying to put a foot on the table there is no like oh i'm gonna work for um 
shoes or for the car or even I work hard to buy the house and stuff like that. It was not even possible to dream about these things. And then you come to, you, to America and you do work one day and you go and buy Nike or Adidas shoes for one day. Man, I, I used to work. I, w- I would beg my dad for a pair of shoes that we would have like to afford one shoes a year. Like right now, not to show off, but I have a 15, 20 pair of shoes right now and I donate it every year. Just, you know, because it's normal to have shoes over there. Like you have one pair of shoes, winter, summer, um, rain or sun. You have that one pair of shoes. You try to have them as long as possible. So because you have money for another pair of shoes. I know that's not easy to understand. And you think, oh my God, this country is so poor. If you go to Serbia, you would never notice that. And I think that's, um, I'll, I'll try to translate some joke in Serbia. Like, we would say, we make $200 a month. We spend $1,000 a month. How did we get that, those $800? We have no idea. And it's really like that. If you go to Serbia, you will, you will see beautiful cars. Everybody's dressed up. Dolce Gabbana, Adidas, Nike, you name it. Everybody looks great, sitting on the patios, drinking cappuccino and, and um um, coffees and enjoying the day, you would say, man, this country is like dream. But I don't know how we do it, but just the way that, that, that somehow we make it look so pretty, but it's not. Behind that, it's a different story. So I think, first of all, I was hungry. I was hungry for opportunity. Give me opportunity. I don't care how much it costs for me, how much I need to work. If I see it, I'll grab it and I'll work as hard as I can. And, you know, we are also honest people, you know, like we don't like to, we, we work honest, we work hard and we want to do better. And I think if you do that in this country, not going to happen overnight, but sooner than later, things are kind of happen. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I collect uh, questions over the week because my job, our job as entrepreneurs is we're problem solvers, right? You can't get rid of that. I don't. There's no successful entrepreneur that kind of put that aside and said, well, I'm not going to be a problem solver. That doesn't it's exist. Every day. So I brought it. What's that? It's every day, Tim. Just every day. Part of the life. All the time. So I brought a couple questions, and I thought maybe you and I, some business professionals, we could maybe facilitate that. They come from the maintenance industry, uh, some in carpet cleaning, some in uh, junk removal, and some from landscape. But we have some group farm questions I'm going to bring to you. And uh, one of the first questions is, how do you find good help today? I know we've never heard this question, right? <laughs> and we never come across this problem ever. So how do you I, I don't find... know if you're asking me that question at all. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we find good, good help today? You know, there is a, a friend of mine. He owns a carpet cleaning company. Him and I spoke a few years back. We were, he was over in Carson City, Nevada. His wife got extremely sick. And he was in a position where he really needed that key person to be dependent upon. And he could not find him or her. And it was really hard because he had to be that full-time care for his spouse who got very ill, but then had to run his business. It was showing in his, his age, his life, it just a wonderful man. But you could just tell life had taken that toll of trying to balance those things. I know you're a family man, and it's important that we work hard. But it's important that we also give precedent to our number one business, which is our family. Work starts in our slippers, right? I know your priorities are very, values are very similar to mine. Uh, so back to the question, how do you find good help? How do you keep good help? Okay, so that's a, that's a really good question. I mean, I just had a friend today call me. He's like, hey, do you know anybody I'm trying to, it's also carpet cleaning business and house cleaning business and I'm looking for an office manager. Uh, everybody's looking for good help. First of all, for me, the biggest problem was to learn how to delegate. Okay. I, I thought I, I'm the best, you know, um, I was in the truck, I was cleaning carpets. I was getting, I mean, we have over thousand excellent reviews on engines, Google, we getting yes. a single day. Uh, for me, quality was more than anything, like always quality versus quantity. Like it doesn't matter if it's going to be just me. As long as the quality and as long as the clients are happy, um, I was I was okay. But you're right. Then I got tired. And you know, working 16, 18 hours a day, you don't have time for family. You don't have energy for family afterwards. And you know, I have a daughter. She's 
turning 11 in December, and at that time she was very young, and I wanted to have some memories, and I want her to know her dad, right? So first of all, I had to learn that I'm not, I wasn't the best. There's, there are people out there that are good. Um, it's not easy to find them, but if you're not looking for them, you won't find them. If you don't believe that they better, they can be better than you, uh, it's not going to happen. First of all, you got to learn how to delegate. Second of all, my biggest problem was to put a system in the place, right? I can't just say, look, there is a truck. This is how you clean the carpets, right? So we start systemizing everything step by step, okay? So you give them kind of step by step book and process. Some of them will follow and they will become better than you. Some of them won't. The biggest thing on the beginning for me was to let people go. Right now, I have no problem with that. If, I always, if you get some new members, I tell them, look, two weeks, you're going to see this the company for you, and I want to see if you good fit for this team. Because we develop such a great team, and I don't need anybody to ruin it, right? So on the beginning, I would get people that were, they didn't want it to learn. They were not honest. They, they were not here for company. They were here for quick money. So I was like doing everything to keep them, which was taking my energy and everything. And then like, oh my gosh, everybody's so bad. If you hire people and they're not good and they don't want to do it, let them go. Find somebody else, keep looking. And then when you find the right person that's willing to be, and there are people out there. It's not like we can find good people. You're not looking for good people. That's, that's the problem. Um, you got to give them training, you got to give them system, process, you can't just expect from them to know, oh my gosh, if I, if I clean the carpets for 10 years, it's so easy for me, right? Everything, using the machine, talking to a client, it's so easy. Then when you look somebody who just starting, he looks like this person, it's not really, you know, skilled to do this. No, it's not true. You've been doing it for 10 years, of course it's easy, but if you start doing something new, it's not, you're not going to be as good as you being good in, in doing the cleaning carpet. So I, I think people, first of all, need to understand that for, for me, delegation, systems, processes, and time. They're not going to learn over there. I, I had good people, and I have really amazing, amazing team right now that, you know, I, I trust them, whatever happens. And um, they know that, our clients are very important to us, and we got to 100% work. If something's not good, we go back and fix it. No, no question asked. But on the other side, I, I trust my, my my team, and I know they have bad days and good days. And if it's something wrong, it doesn't mean they're just bad people. You, let's see what, what's wrong and how not to let it happen again. But if you start digging into, it's your fault, your mistake, don't do it again. And you, I mean, you know. If you meet my team and we come in here, we, we have a, every morning uh, get together, or we, we used to put hands and, and did DNA and jump and all this stuff. Now we do with legs, so <laughs> we keep it at distance. But um, it, it takes time. It takes time to build up the team, but once you find somebody who is good, pay him well, treat him well, and, and don't think they're going to become bad because you're treating them well. But you have to have some kind of systems and processes and you can't just expect from them by telling them, hey, Jeff, I told you that yesterday. Hey, Jeff, I told you that three days ago. This is how it's done. Telling them it's not. You got to show them, first of all. You, you know, for me, it's teach, like, uh, train them, don't blame them. That's, that's my kind of... What I think to train them, don't blame them because blaming them, fine. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. I I couldn't agree more. You couldn't have put it better. I I got to be honest. I have a temper. I do, and I've had to work on that. Yeah. And I'm I had to realize that I'm not a very good manager. Uh, Bryce and Cassidy and Ryan are excellent at management. I've learned there's a difference between management and leadership and learning that everyone has a role. And you could maybe be both, maybe you're that special hybrid, but me, I had to put my chips down on, hey, this is what I really wanna do. This is what I think God has gifted me and what I'm good at. But I'm not great over here, but 
I still have to hold that person accountable over here to what I'm not great at. Yeah. Therein comes the variable. And then that's where, you know, God will refine us and teach us certain things and say, okay, remind me, hey, you're not great at this, Jeff, but you're trusting them to be great at it. I've given you the ability to supervise. I was raised by a building inspector. I don't know how to build anything. Uh, you know, my wife does, but we don't need to. Well, maybe I guess we are telling everybody. My wife's a better <laughs> carpenter than me. Everyone knows. But I was raised by a building inspector, so I know what a great job looks like. I know what a perfect uh, website looks like or SEO. It's like I like to inspect. Uh, but when I jump in and try to grab all the tools and mechanic, my team goes, Jeff, come on. you got to trust us a little bit. And I told my team, I went from the mindset of I trust you'll do the right thing, which almost sounds threatening, to I trust you enough to make a mistake. And that was a really hard leap for me because you don't want mistakes to happen. And you try to have systems in place to prevent mistakes, but we deal with something called human beings. And with almost every problem, there's some sort of human attached to it. So I had to learn to step back and say, okay, this is my role I have to trust. But like you, and you even did with us, there's that early vetting process. Look, I need to position myself to trust you. So I'm going to spend an incubation period trusting you, right? Yeah. And you did that with us early in our relationship. You're like, hey, this is the probationary period, Jeff. I'm like, I like this guy already because... That's something I, I would say, and I love the standard. And I, I look at your business, and I've studied it because I have to. Um, that's part of our business. But I really think the standards are really um, compromised a lot in this field, and people often put standards second. And not being in DNA on a daily basis, but be on the outside looking in, I think the standards really permeate. They show. They show in the organization online of your business, your trucks, your team, uh, the social media, it shows that this is a business that's organized. But what were some challenges you hit early on? So people that are just starting out. So I got a guy wants to start a business, okay, wants to start a business in Nevada. And he's coming into a noisy space and maintenance. He's coming into the junk removal industry. And how does he set himself up to stand apart when there's 20, 30 competitors out there? What are some basic principles, maybe one or two things that we could teach to him? So first of all, let me let me uh, get back to you what you just said. Like you know that you have a temper. You know the, that that's amazing because you know we are not blessed with all the skills that we need. Sometimes we have skills. Everybody is blessed with some skills doing better, some not. But what you said that that was really good. You said like I know I have a temper and I work on that. But if you don't want to admit that you have a temper, you you can't have a business. I mean, you might have business, but people won't like working with you because right. when you learn about yourself and you learn the good side, which you have a lot, and you have some not so good side, and you kind of work on that, that helps a lot. So on the beginning, I, I can say just this, try to trust the process. Unfortunately for me on the beginning, you know, you have a marketing, sale, operation, administration, and leadership, right? So those five things, I was in every single box everywhere, right? Maybe I was good here and there, but I wasn't good here and there. So if you're not good in something, learn about yourself, find what you're really good into. If you're good in marketing and sell, you can throw your business quicker because that's a very, very important. I mean, without marketing and sell, obviously, you can have the best, the best operation on the earth, but if you don't have sale, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. So you can be everything, right? And um, the hardest thing for me in the beginning was we were doing so good, like me and getting another one or two guys and I'm, I'm doing marketing, sale, operation, administration. I'm doing everything and, and, and we're doing great. And then you hire somebody, let's say, to answer the phone. To answer the, sorry about that. To answer the- That was good timing. <laughs> yeah. You answer the phone and and they don't do as, as good as you, you know, you think you would do. You know, they don't schedule the job and like, man, I would schedule this job. You know, we need jobs. They need, so judging on the daily basis is the wrong thing to do. You got to let people three months at least to do something. Obviously, they care and they want to learn. If they don't want to learn and they don't care, you don't need them more than three days. But if they do, you got to give them three months. Uh, it's very important for the scripts. You can't just tell people what to do. You've got to write it down so they can read it from the scripts. Simple and, and easy. 
Hi, my name is Dragan. I'm with DNA ProClean Installation. How can I help you today? You know, a couple of questions that they need to ask clients uh, before you just tell them, do this, this, and that. So, mm -hmm. again, scripts, system, processes, don't tell people, and every day, like, oh, why would you say that? Don't say this. Give them three months if they're willing to learn, and if they are good people and they want to work with you, um, after three months, you won't need to be on the phone anymore. So you're done with that. First three months, you might lose some jobs. She, she might not, or he might not close all the jobs that you would close, but three months later, they would do better job than you because they've been doing it 100% that. Then you find somebody who's going to help you on the field, or you find somebody who's going to do trucks, and you train them. But give them time. Don't, don't, don't get mad at people. Don't judge. If they're good people and want to learn, you have everything that you need. You just need to teach them. And you, you know, it takes time, obviously, but after three years, you will see yourself being with seven or ten or five people. They're doing great jobs and like working with you. So we have a really family oriented. I, I, I believe in God. I love Jesus. And for me, helping others, you know, and, and also the, the other thing for me was like, oh my gosh, what do you think about five trucks? Or what do you think about million dollars company? You, you becoming greedy. Then I had to realize that's not being greedy. You do more, you help more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that really helped Absolutely. me to kind of, yep, and that kind of helped me to kind of open up and, and, you know, I made every single mistake you can make from starting the business and I would love to help anybody. I mean, I'm not, some, I, I don't know everything, but what I do know, uh, I would love to help people and, and, you know, if anybody wants that you know, want, want to give me a call yes. and talk about it anytime, man, because this is, if you help some people not to make mistakes and, and jump over those mistakes, you know, first of all, they will save money. They will, they will not quit on the business. I, I was hitting ceiling after ceiling after ceiling after ceiling, and still I have a ceiling above, and I'm trying to break it, and I, and I expect another ceiling. But now when it right. works that way, it's easier than when you don't. Like, oh, I'm doing everything I should do, and nothing's happening. Right. You know, there is a book, Compound Effect, uh, yeah, it's a great, great book. Love it's that book. book. It, it doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes time. You know, I, my background, as you might know, I, I'm not sure if we had this discussion, but I went to college uh, and I, I went for behavioral therapy. I majored in early childhood development. I have younger siblings. My mom's adopted more kids. I don't even know how many siblings I have today because she keeps adopting foster kids and you know, but a lot of siblings raised in a daycare. I wrote programs for kids. Da, da, da. I have a long resume of working with children. I mean, I feel like I'm a few weeks from PhD from this kind of stuff. You know, I qualified, educated. And then I had my own kids and realized I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not the same, you know. And uh, my wife, you know, I have a stepdaughter. She's my daughter now, uh, of course. Uh, but I, I thought it'd be really wise, you know, because I had all this education to give her some advice, like on how she should parent. This is before we had our own kids. And it wasn't a wise decision to tell her how she should parent when she looks at me like, you've never raised a child. So we can have all the education in the world, but when people can glean from someone else off of their experience, because really in that situation, no matter if you're an a educated person or an experienced person, Regina up into that point into us having more children, she's the, more, she's the wiser person to learn from because she's gone through it. She's experienced parenthood. I have an experience. I read it in a book. I, somebody else's kids, they go home. They're my siblings. I'm not responsible for them financially and take them to the doctor or do all these types of things that parents have had to work with. So I think it's great. I think uh, for me, it's like, I feel the reason I'm in blue collar is because I come from there and I love working with blue collar companies because I feel a responsibility. I'm like, Hey, I, I learned things. Chances are, if you're young, you haven't made as many strikeouts as me. I've had to go through a lot of the stuff to learn and a lot of those challenges. So um, what do you feel, just one or two things before we close out here, what do you feel is if you could go back and tell Dragon, you know, during inception when you really started DNA, maybe first year, uh, the birthing process, right? The first 10 months to 18 months when you're really trying to get the business off the ground, which is usually general one to 18 months, actually, you're getting that business rolling. 
that we're always growing. There's always different stages and challenges. But those early days, those early days for DNA, what would you go back and tell Dragon today? Read books. Read books. Listen audio every single day because mm. that, honestly, you know, I'm not a reader. I didn't go to college. Uh, I was using this. I was like hardest work guy ever. I would work 24 hours, no problem. But I didn't use this much. You know, it was for me, it was like, be honest, do a great job, and things are going to happen. You will get to the point, but mm -hmm. above that, there is other things that you need to do. Reading, mm -hmm. I mean, I get up every, every morning at 5.30 in the morning. For me, uh, praying, reading Bible, and reading books while I'm doing push-ups, it's, it's, it's been like habit to do every single day, Monday to Friday, for like two years now. And that happens so much. When I come to work at 7.30, I'm already two hours awake. I did 250 push-ups already. I read the book. I read the Bible. I'm ready, man. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I love let's it. Go. I love it. I love I, it. I'm attacking the day. I don't like the day. Attack me. And, you know, I learn, obviously, I, I find out that problems are problems. They're going to be every single day. Things happen. And don't react to it. Try to find out what happened, how to fix it, and not to happen again. But don't go back. Who did it? Why did it? Uh, whose mistake is this? You're going to pay for that? For me, that, that never worked and I never tried it. But if I could say, tell myself 10 years back and I see myself sitting down and like, why is this not working? I'm trying everything. I would say there is no secret. Everything is the books. You just need to read it. That's all I would say. Very good. Very good. Well, Dragon, I appreciate you taking the time today. Your time's valuable. I, I appreciate your client. I, I have a lot of favorites, and I, I don't toss it around lightly, but I love people that I can learn from, and you're one of them. I, uh, I get to learn and glean from you as a business. Uh, my business is successful because of clients like you, and I want to say thank you, and we sincerely appreciate having you. Um, but I wanted you to give kind of a send-off. Uh, how can people get in touch with you if they have questions about carpet cleaning, maintenance, entrepreneurship. I think you have a lot to offer. So what's the best way I, we can give them the website? Um, it would probably be the best way to, you, they can get in touch with you through there, correct? Yep, dnaproclean.com uh, is the website. Uh, the best, I'm more phone guy. I like to talk to people. I like to feel the vibe. Uh, not an email guy. If you send me emails, most likely I'll respond very shortly. But if you want to really find right. out something, um, give me a call. Uh, we can put my cell phone number. Um, if anybody wants to call me directly, that's not a problem. On the website, there's office number. You can ask for me. Um, they write your name down, and I'll call you back if, if that works as well. But like I said, um, I, I don't know everything. And Jeff, I talked to you so many times, and I'm learning from you. You have a great team. Um, we, we, we try to help each other to learn better. Um, and how to provide a better service to our clients. It's all, it's all about that. But whatever I can help and I did go through, I have no problem sharing. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you, Dragon. I'm going to see you on the East Coast soon. All right. We'll have a cup of coffee. I can't wait. Man. God bless. <laughs> thank you. All right. You too. All right. I'm going to end